Because Henry was at the works, the other engines had to help with the flying kipper too. This is a special train of vans filled with boxes of fish, which goes to markets in London and other places on the mainland. James did not like the flying kipper. All those smelly vans, he complained one morning. You can't get the smell off your tender for weeks. I'm very fond of a good kipper, remarked his driver. You're welcome to it, retorted James. A right old misery today, aren't you, said his fireman. You got out of the shed by the wrong door this morning, and no mistake. Now get a move on, or the fat controller will give you something to moan about. Groaning horribly on the curves, James went slowly down to the harbour. The vans for the train were already in the shed, while men in aprons worked busily, loading them with boxes of fish. Poo! said James, wrinkling his nose. James was coupled to the vans. He had not been waiting long when a forklift truck laden with fish boxes rounded the corner and came towards him. Another, hurrying away from new load, came too fast in the opposite direction. The loaded one swerved to avoid the other one and its heavy load shifted. Six full boxes slipped from the top of the pile and burst open on the rails in front of James. James closed his eyes in horror. Ugh! He shuddered. Broken fish and boxes lay everywhere. For once, James was right. The smell was not nice. Luckily, there was plenty of time for the men to clear up the mess before James had to leave. A good job the boxes didn't fall on you, James, said his driver, winking at the fireman. James shuddered again. The idea was too awful to think about. At last, all was ready, and the guard showed his green lamp. Thank goodness, said James to himself. There was a speed limit in the harbour area, so James could not start quickly. The train seemed heavier than usual tonight too, so that when he reached the spot where the fish boxes had burst, he was moving at no more than walking pace. The rail seemed clean, but oil and scales from the spilt fish were still there, coating them with a slippery film. As soon as James reached the place, his driving wheels, with nothing to grip, began to spin helplessly. James did his best, but the heavy vans dragged him to a standstill. He found he could move neither forward nor back. Fish! exclaimed James in disgust. Men brought hoses and washed the rails. James grew very wet and uncomfortable. Then they put sand on the rails in front of each driving wheel, and James was at last able to move his train. He was very late, but at least he was off the fish key. To say he was glad would be putting it mildly.